Hi. Well, we're nearing the completion of a long bathroom remodel, but the fun starts for me now because I get to build all the cabinetry. And first up are the two medicine cabinets. And you can see here a prototype that I made uh, prior to starting the remodel. Prototype allowed me to work through some of the design elements, uh, the construction details. We got to confirm that we liked the styling. And finally, it was really handy to have this prototype uh, on hand during the construction phase. We could confirm that these cavities were built to the proper size to fit the cabinet. So uh, let's go into the workshop now. I'll show you how I make them. And uh, when they're complete, I'll come back, install them, and briefly go over how long it took me to make them and what the material costs were. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the construction details. Uh, the, the cabinet consists of two major assemblies, the, uh, the box and the face frame. Uh, my box is going to be made from solid maple with uh, maple plywood for the back, and it will be naturally finished. The face frame is going to be poplar, and that's going to be painted, except for the door. Most of the construction will be pocket screws, just like the prototype, which will really speed up the construction. I got over pocket screws a long time ago. I think they're great for any kind of built-in furniture or furniture that uh, is constructed primarily of plywood. So off camera, I'm going to uh, prepare all the stock to final dimensions and then come back and start working on the joinery. I've completed the milling for all the components. Everything is at its uh, final dimensions. I have uh, everything for two cabinets. The main box is maple and that's going to be uh, clear finished. And then what I'm calling the face frame is poplar and that's going to be painted white. And I've started the prep work for one of the boxes here. Pocket screws will make this assembly go uh, quickly, uh, but that's that'll be the last operation I do. Uh, the first step is to prepare for the back. I've marked the location for the dado uh, on all four pieces. I like to do this so I don't uh, make a mistake when I take this to the machinery and cut on the wrong side which I've done before. So I'll be doing this at the table saw with my uh, dado blade set. And the back will be fitting in here like so. Of course I don't have to worry about the exposed rabbit because this is going to be inside the wall. Back to the mock-up, I've cut some foam shelves so I could experiment with locations and uh, attach them just with masking tape. So now I know where the shelves will be located, I can proceed and drill the holes in the final pieces. The one time use shelf pin alignment jig is ready to go. And it should last for the through the four sides that I need to drill. are going to work. These are these solid brass polished nickel inserts. And here's the shelf support. Beautiful. With all the shelf support holes drilled, I just need to drill the two cabinet mounting holes on each side and then I can move on with uh, pocket holes.
before I assemble the box, I'm going to pre-finish everything. I'll be using this deft satin finish. Last step before assembly is to install the shelf pin sleeves. Now the last thing I want to do when installing these is hit them directly with a hammer and risk marring my wood. So I took a dowel to my drill press and formed a tenon on the end of it that I can insert to the sleeve and then drive it home by hitting this end. I'm ready for the glue up now, even though there's actually no glue, it's just the pocket screws. But I have my sides supported with these clamps to keep them vertical which makes it easy with, deal, with dealing at this end where I'm applying the clamp. I have pads to protect the, my pre-finished edge from the clamp. I've triple checked all the joints to make sure they're all flush and of course the clamp is nice and tight because without that these joints will shift on you when you uh, drive the screws home. This maple is tough stuff. I've completed all of, of the pocket hole joinery and I've assembled what I can at, at this point. But now I need to uh, mortise the hinges into the styles before I can assemble the entire um, face frame. Using the hinge as a guide, I've knifed the outline. I've used my chisel to really define the outline of the hinge and uh, now I can move to the router to uh, freehand this out. I'm ready to start routing. I have an extra piece in back to uh, provide more support for the router and, um, and I have done a, a test cut just to confirm that the depth is set uh, just perfectly.
The last thing to do before I start making the doors for the cabinet is to secure the face frame to the body. And to assist me, I'm going to be using dowels as registration pins. So when I put together the case, I had d drilled uh, holes for quarter inch dowels. I'm going to use these dowel centers to help me locate the holes in the face frame. I made this registration block so I can set the bottom reveal and it'll be identical for both cabinets. Don't need any glue. They're just registration pins, which you'll see me use when I do attach the face frame. Time to make the doors. I made this one six scale model of my cabinet so I could uh, experiment with different door styles. And the first one I tried was this very plain and which works with this cabinet it's a medicine it's a craftsman style medicine cabinet after all which doesn't have a lot of decoration and uh, I think that looks good but what I decided to go with was this style where the rails are 1 8 inch thinner than the styles And uh, it's going to give it a nice look. So everything I need for my two drawer doors are going to come from this one plank of uh, poplar. And it's, it's a six-quarter poplar because that's what I had on hand. And I would have preferred to go with five-quarter just because it would have been cheaper. I can't go with four quarter because these doors need to be made out of perfectly flat and straight lumber and you're not going to get that from four quarter stock straight from the lumber yard or very unlikely to. So um, I prefer to mill my own. Uh, so I'm going to joint this and plane it to thickness and then uh, we'll start the joinery. Stock is cut to final dimensions and ready for joinery. I'm going to use my small domino machine with six millimeter dominoes to join the rails to the styles. Now based on past experience with the dominoes, with, um, I, there's not enough space to really get two dominoes of this size in this piece. And this is the bottom rail, which is two inches versus the top, which is inch and uh, three quarters. And um, I think the domino, one domino is plenty strong for this size door. But the problem I've had in the past is when gluing up, you'll tend to, it'll be easy for the piece still to twist a little bit. This is how I'm going to take care of the twisting. I added a one eighth inch dowel. And... Uh, it's very easy, easy to make that joint. I'll show you how in a second. It goes together perfectly and the dowel is acting as a registration pin not for strength and it really does prevent any twisting so I think that's going to work beautifully when I glue this up. So to drill those 1 8 inch dowel holes. I made this simple one time jig. I drilled the 1 8 inch dowel hole on the drill press which guarantees that I have a perpendicular hole. 
and then in, in use I just register the piece like this I can drill the hand drill and then flip this over on the other piece and drill that hole and they um, they match perfectly so I'm going to do that right now with uh, the real pieces I'm ready to cut the domino joints, but before I started that, I laid out all my joinery and I put a piece of blue tape on the back side, the reference side for the domino. And I would do the same thing if I were using a biscuit joint joiner. So if I don't see the blue tape, I know I have my uh, piece oriented the wrong way, which again I've, <laughs> I've done in the past. So this way I don't have to think. Just I see the blue tape, I'm good. I'm ready to cut the rabbits for the mirror at the router table. I've marked everything with a black magic marker so I can't uh, cut the wrong section. And I also took the time to use my marking gauge to scribe the lines for the rabbits and that will eliminate any possible uh, tear out that I might I might have gotten without doing this the rabbits are complete for both frames and I squared up the stopped rabbits not fully though. I'm going to wait till I glue up the doors before I do the final fitting. The final thing to do with these doors before I glue them up is to route, chop, and uh, fit the hinges to the styles. It'll be a lot easier to do that on this one piece than when I have the door glued up. So I'll do that now. So I'm just going to stick my style in the face frame. It's a nice tight fit, as you can see, which is good. And now I can transfer the hinge locations over to this new piece. Now I'll just use the router and chisels to cut out those mortises just like I did on, on the face frame. Since the rails are an eighth inch thinner than the styles, I can't get access to the surface once they're glued up. So I'm going to um, just take a few passes with my smoothing plane to clean up the surface. And then I'll be able to glue it up. I like to glue my dominoes joints in a two-step process. First I'll glue the dominoes in my um, rails and I'll let that dry half an hour or so essentially turning them into tenons, if you want to think about it that way. It just makes it that much less to glue up at one time. And I don't apply any glue here. I think uh, these dominoes are pretty tough to get out without any glue. <laughs> so um, that'll be plenty of glue.
I wanted to touch upon the use of my registration dowel and say that it did not work. I had to remove those dowels. Probably half of them were uh, spot on, but the other half were off just a little bit, which the joints came together, but it um, created a slight bit of an offset. And uh, I think that just came down to the use of my um, one-time jig. It was a little bit too much of a one-time jig. This, I think this hole just uh, wore away as I was drilling. So I'm totally giving up on this technique. I think maybe if I were to get this made out of some uh, hardened steel and um, maybe work the fence a little bit, uh, this technique would, would work. Uh, fortunately, these joints came out, um, they, they did not have any twist in them, so the doors came out fine. The doors are complete. They came out very nice. No warp in them. So the next step is to fit them into the face frame. I want to have my cabinet in its final orientation, so I've uh, screwed this temporary uh, wooden L bracket to the cabinet, and then I have it clamped to my workbench, so it, it uh, I can safely work on it without worrying about it falling off. Okay, I have my face frame temporarily clamped tight to the cabinet, and the, the door is just. Um, loosely fitted in just to see how it's how it's looking and uh, I think it's looking great so far. You can see I have a nice even sixteenth of an inch um, wide uh, reveal on the hinge side which is perfect and that's what I want. And along the top edge it's nice and even. It's tight which is uh, perfect so now I can take it to the table saw and take about a thirty second inch off and we uh, test fit. Okay, complete. As you can see, I have a nice even reveal around the perimeter. It's a heavy heavy sixteenth and it'll, it'll look a little less thick once I get about three coats of paint on it. Um, so I'm, I'm happy though. I think they're going to look great. So I just had to do this with the other cabinet and uh, I can finally move on to painting. I'm ready to start painting and I'm going to try something new this time for myself. I'm, I'm using a high volume, low pressure Apollo sprayer, which I've had for years. Works great for uh, spraying paint. But um, this time I'm setting up a spray booth outside and I went out and I bought this pop up uh, canopy. It's uh, 10 foot by 10 foot. It was 80 bucks at Lowe's and it really does set up quick. And then I took, took some. Uh, cloth tarp and wrapped it around the side, clamping it, and I have a, a spray booth. And uh, it's going to be working much better than trying to spray in my, in my workshop. Let me take you inside. I'm not going to film my actual spraying. Here you can get a sense of the space. It's not bad. I think it's going to work good. I've already sprayed the face frame and I'm getting ready to spray the doors and prep for the doors and everything. I put one coat of uh, one pound shellac, sanded it smooth and then uh, when you paint your, uh, apply your paint you get no, no uh, uh, grain raising and uh, it stays real smooth. So uh, this is my setup. See you in a little bit. Now everything is finished being painted. I can attach the face frame.
Okay, I can finally install install the cabinets in the wall and then um, after they're installed I can hang the doors. Both openings are prepped for the cabinets. The, these cabinets are identical to the prototype I made so uh, I know they'll fit uh, but I did do, do a dry run just pressing it in there. I used a level to make sure that the cabinet was uh, was level when it was uh, pressed in, um, which it is, so the doors won't uh, swing open or swing closed by themselves. I uh, cut this piece of wood to use as a spacer off my um, wainscoting cap, which I know is level, and put some cork on the top and bottom so I won't scratch this finish and I won't uh, scratch the finish on the cabinet. So I'm just going to lay the cabinet on top of this and um, then I'll be able to secure it. I'm going to be securing this cabinet with these stainless steel number 14 uh, wood screws. I went with stainless steel so it kind of matches the nickel finish throughout the cabinet. So I, when I made the cabinet I pre-drilled these uh, countersunk holes and now I'm going to use a transfer punch to uh, to make a mark on the studs where this is going to be secured and then I'll pre-drill the holes. I'm using a brad point bit uh, drill which should keep the bit from wandering as I drill, drill the hole. I have the holes drilled and to make life easy on myself when I actually install the cabinets I'm going to pre-tap the holes. So I'm just going to take this sample screw and use my impact driver to, uh, to tap them. Last thing I want to do is damage these uh, screw heads, so I'm not going to power drive those in. I'm going to use an old-fashioned screwdriver, but it should be fairly easy since I pre-tapped the holes. Okay, one down. And one more to go. Then I can work in the doors. Time to fit the mirror. I use this piece of eighth inch MDF cut to the exact size I needed with uh, you know a little bit of margin. This fit my uh, doors. I gave this to the glass company and then they uh, cut the mirrors that fit this perfectly. And that way I was assured that um, the mirrors I got would fit the doors. I don't like to give glass companies uh, measurements. I like to give them a template. Here's the resulting mirror I'm about to clean before I put it in, but I just wanted to show you it's 532nd inch thick, slightly more than an eighth inch. And I had them apply the safety uh, material on the back, so if the mirror were to break, 
it uh, wouldn't wouldn't shatter into dangerous uh, pieces. And also, I think it uh, I think it adds a nice, interesting texture that'll look look nice in the in the cabinets when you open up the door. We'll see how it looks when the when they're installed. You notice that I have carpet samples that I'm using to protect my finish as I work on this. And it fits good. To keep the mirror from sliding around, I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue along the margin here. In a couple of spots. I've cut these 3 16 inch square pieces of poplar that I'm um, just going to uh, miter the corners for a spring fit in here and then I'll be attaching them with um, pin nails. I'm going to rough cut the 45 degree miter, my hand saw. And then I'll finish this on the my disc sander. Disc sander really makes it easy to to work up to a nice fit with these small pieces like this. So that's what I want, just a little sp spring spring in it. I'll just uh, get the four other pieces, the three other pieces. Everything's fit with a slight spring to it. And um, now we can paint them. And I have also marked with a pen each piece so where they fit. So when I actually install them, I'll Get them in their correct positions just in case there's some slight variability between these different pieces. I'm going to use a 23 pin nailer to secure these pieces and just a little bit of foam to a little extra insurance against the mirror for the recoil. And that's it. Time to install them. Well, finally the the fun part. Completing the installation of the door and the cabinet being done. So I'm just gonna wax the hinge screws, which will help. I've all my hinges have been marked. I engraved, engraved them, so I'd put put them in exactly how I marked them originally when I mortised the locations. I'm using a high quality uh, screwdriver with a, a bit that perfectly fits the screw head so it does not slip.
Okay, well, the door magically appeared. <laughs> Can I attach? Because um, I had to get help from my wife. She didn't want to be in the camera. This would have been very difficult to mount, to attach this. Uh, it's a fairly heavy door with a smear by myself. So with her help, I just put the two screws and I'll do the rest here. And now the final bit of hardware, the latch. I'm really glad I pre-installed pre all the hardware before I finished the cabinets with the paint. I didn't have to deal with trying to mark, mark on top of paint and being afraid you might damage, damage the finish. This is beautiful hardware. Mm -hmm. Now I get to use this nice nickel plated brass hardware shelf supports. If I mentioned before, but I made some a wood plywood template and uh, provided that to the glass cutter, and um, they cut uh, the four shells for me. Well, it's really nice to wrap this project up. I just wanted to show you the nice even reveal they managed to achieve along the opening. I'm really, really happy with how that, uh, that part of it came out. Wow, complete. This was a big project for me and I'm, I'm glad it's finally done. But I wanted to give you a summary of the costs and time involved in making these. When I add up all the hardware and the wood costs, it comes out to about six, $160 per cabinet. Uh, by far the wood was the least expensive element. I used top-notch nickel plated brass throughout, you know, the glass shelves, the mirror, uh, it adds up. And for time, uh, I did keep a running log in the workshop whenever I worked on the cabinets, uh, but some of, some of it's an estimate, you know, do, do you include the time that you sit at your workbench pondering for an hour, how am I going to do this? Uh, but when I add it up, it comes out to about 21 hours per cabinet. You know, so it gives you a sense of how much effort is involved. And that 21 hours includes all the finishing, the painting, uh, the, the fitting of the doors, the insulation in the wall. Um, yeah, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this build video and uh, thanks for stopping by.